Welcome back everyone to SuperCloud 4's episode four, Jade of AI, I'm John Roy, Dave Vellante. We've got, wrapping up day one, you've got two, two closing sessions. First, we're interviewing Howie Shu, CUBE alumni, now CUBE host as of today, <laughs> also senior executive at Palo Alto Networks, heading up the AI uh, machine learning team over there. Uh, Howie, great to have you back and uh, congratulations on a great panel. Thank you, it's a lot of fun. It's really good. <laughs> you were nervous, were you? Like, did great. You did a poll, you did some prep work, got all your ducks lined up. I did all the homework. You did your homework. The key is the guests though, right? I mean, the guests, you, you did a great job asking questions, but having a great guest from Salesforce, Google, and Microsoft that are so articulate and so technically oriented, but can talk in business terms makes for a great panel. Yeah. Yeah. So, well so the, the, the panel we want to review real quick with you is AI, enterprise AI, hyper-reality, did a poll. Um, you had VJ from Microsoft laid out great commentary there. Um, we had Warren from Google and Jay Esch from Salesforce, all senior executives. Really interesting perspective. Enterprise sees great hope, but it's here. And we had Intel's executives just commenting, like one comment said, well, I don't want to give up my co-pilot. Just, just, they didn't have co-pilot last year. Mm -hmm. So what's your takeaway as looking at now, you know, zooming out and looking at yourself in the panel, what was the big takeaway? Because you had some serious hitters there, big names, a lot of projects, all legit AI going on in all those companies. So zoom out a little bit, right? You know, everyone is asking, hey, you know, this enterprise software, you know, adoption of the generative AI, is that a hype or a reality, right? You know, what is the killer applications, right? Because we all talk about it, but how many are in production and then are there any killer applications? My one-liner takeaway on this one question is, you know, it's really about giving superpower to everyone from all walks of life. That's actually pretty amazing, right? Because, you know, whether you are doing, you know, programmer, product manager, you know, whatever the w things you are doing, you are going to, you know, get superpower and then do something fundamentally quite different on top of what you have been doing. You know, some of what you have been doing may be, you know, replaced by co-pilot, yeah. but you are suddenly actually empowered you know, to do a lot more things. That is my one line to take away, because it's not just the yeah. killer applications, it's actually giving superpower to But that's what it was, the killer app was accessed for, to, for, for all, right? To drive it's productivity. It's interesting, the, you know, in tech and business schools, you hear terms like competitive strategy, competitive advantage. The word that I always loved was disruptive enabler. And with the consumerization of AI, what's coming out of day one here, Dave, and, and Howie, I'd say is that you're seeing the consumerization of AI in the hands of people where they go, oh, it's magic, or I like this. I can, I can feel the back, I can feel the benefit. I can see some future. But how your point about that enablement, that's a disruptive enablement because the, the creativity, even Warren said it on the cute beer. He said, he sees more creativity coming. More, you say productivity, uh, Arun from Intel said knowledge workers. All the same language for enablement. This is like the, this is the key thing, the enablement. What will AI enable? And enablement, not just for incrementally better, incrementally productivity, right? It's actually, you know, think out of the box. Step right? function. Step function improvement, right? Something very different. I've been having conversations with some of my friends, you know, they are the, whether the MLE, machine learning engineer, or data scientists in some big companies, right? The boundary between data scientists and then machine learning engineers are kind of getting, the, the boundary is getting blurry. Um, so, yeah. so you need to rethink about You don't you need know, to have eight doing. PhDs on staff. I heard one of your comments on your panel is interesting. You know, what would you give a bunch of PhD students uh, or experts? Imagine having that capability. So that step function change um, is interesting. I guess the, my next question is, where are we in your mind? Okay. Enterprise always feel a little bit behind because there's so much to going on, data, governance, security. Consumer, the startups are just slinging code, trying to launch a company. Then you got the big hyperscalers with the cloud scale out there. How do you see the interplay between say the hot startup, you know, throwing, you know, throwing the arrows at the big guys, trying to David versus Goliath, the big whales, and then the, the, I won't say slow moving enterprise, but traditionally slow moving to implement. You know, look, you know, the technology is amazing, right? All of us have the yep. consensus at this point. The question is, can we land this technology so that it can be, you know, useful at scale and then, you know, people can consume that. I think there is still 
long way to go on, on that one, right? You know, I think uh, Warren mentioned that we have all the pieces, but when you piece them together, that, you know, it takes a lot of effort. What I would have called it, I think some of the people, you know, uh, in, at this super cloud also mentioned that there, there is a last mile thing, right? You know, all the technology is good. How do you connect the, that technology with the data you have, um, you know? If I were to start a company, you know, tomorrow, I would have called it lastmile.ai, of course. The <laughs> domain name may be, may be too expensive to get. Right? Um, because, you know, fundamentally, there's still a last mile thing, right? You know, all the technology is good. You know, how, to, how do I actually attach my data with it, right? Is that easy, right? You know, sure, I have the fine tuning, I have the yeah. rag, you know, on the paper. Yeah. But when you actually do it, there are a lot of details. And actually your LinkedIn poll showed 63% said biggest shift but takes time. Yeah. There were some skeptics, about 20% of the yeah. people said, oh, it's peak, peak people. cycle. But so mm -hmm. what is that last mile? What, is, what are those last mile? Is it data privacy? Is it data quality? So I did a two poll. You know, one is, you know, yeah. how big is well, the technology shift, right? The other one is, what are the number one challenge? It's actually all over the place. There's no one place, right? Yeah. Well, the model can be better. We all know that, right? You know, less hallucination, you know, so on and so on. And then there is also a kind of a um, data side, right? Data could be data retrieval, right? The accuracy, all that sort of thing. And then there is a compliance, security, governance, yeah. uh, governance right? Yeah. Um, so. All of the above. All of That's the really above. The answer. All of the above. I, I, I want so, so, last so, so mile. the last one mile is not just the one thing. It was the last mile of a number. Right. Of we got to dig so, the trench. We have to get yeah. the cable. We so, have hold to on. Hold sure on. So this, this is, I want to tee into this because <laughs> Bratton Saha, this AWS VP, was on our keynote. He was our opening um, um, presentation. You had Google, Microsoft. So we had all the hyperscales here on SuperCloud 4, as well as um, the CTO of SaaS, an older company that has modernized their their game. Then we had a panel of founders. I call them the senior founders. I won't say senior, I didn't call them that, but experienced founders. Uh, P.U. Sharma and Vikram uh, Yoshi, one's a compute guy, one's security guy. Both. Serial entrepreneur. Yeah, serial entrepreneur. You are uh, an entrepreneur as well, and you know you work for the big company. You think like one, you've been one. Um, you've been an EIR at Greylock. So I have to ask you the question I asked those guys. As an experienced founder that's seen the cycles before, obviously you're well, well articulated what you're looking at, killer app, infrastructure, game changing, step function. If you were going to start a company today, what would you, how would you do it? Like, I mean, obviously the cloud was great because you didn't have to provision any hardware to get going, so you're in the market quick. What's that, what's that feature of AI that makes it better now to do a startup? And what would you do? How would you execute? Not the idea, but like, take us through the mindset. If you're going to start a company tomorrow, say, Take the cube and turn it into an AI. Right, so the mindset wise, right, there are a number of things, right? You know, we already talk about, uh, there are multiple last mile <laughs> issues, right? Yeah. I would say solving any one of them is a big deal, right? You know, big company will solve those problems, but you know, big company, it's harder for them to be super focused, super laser focused to solve one problem super well, right? So that's sort of the one thing. The other thing is, I think, uh, you know, I mentioned this at a super cloud of three, you know, the future of entrepreneur, they are facing a very different environment because of the power, because of the superpower they have. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll probably, we'll see a lot more uh, solopreneur. Now, by solopreneur, I do not mean single. I mean a lot less resources, right? What used to be kind of a 20 people, 30 people team, Today you should think about uh, can you do this you know yeah. with five people? Uh, I was actually having lunch with VJ you know today before the uh, panel, and uh, he mentioned that hey you know anyone can start a Gen AI project you know with yeah. real sort of a lifestyle less budget right? a lifestyle business could pick one little thing in a vertical and be big yeah and own it. Yeah, my son is doing a Gen AI project. He's in the middle school, and then he said, hey, daddy, can I get some budget from you? I said, sure. You know, he's you already want to doing great. And I, I'm asking him, I said, how much, you know? He said, five dollars. Five dollars would have gave him a long way to do He's going to be a great entrepreneur. Do, right? seed funding. You often say we've, this industry has solved complexity with complexity, because you think about the cloud, we talked about two pizza teams, right? Two pizza, and then that turned into what you just described two people. as a, a 20 pizza team. Will the same thing happen here? Because we're saying, okay, you can start these companies for a lot less, right? Do you think that the complexity that we tend to add on to this business is going to be similar and that we tend to modularize things, we tend to open source, you know, new projects, 
and it, and it increases complexity. Do you think but they, at that point, you're talking about a very different problem because, you know, like any technology, right, once that one technology becomes the mainstream, right, so I grew up at VMware, right, you know, yeah. just a very small number of people get a first hypervisor out, right, but by the time, you know, I left VMware 10 years later, it was, what, 15,000 people working yeah. on that hypervisor. Yeah. Yeah. Success. So the reason yeah. is because then you have a partnership, integration yeah. this, you know, sales and the storyline. You're growing also. your market. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's a very different problem. I think, you know, what what we are talking about here is, you know, this superpower that generative AI brings to the table yep. can do things that otherwise takes five people. Yeah, and I think that's the, that's the, I, my, my point about complexity, Dave, is that AI can reduce that. I think that's the key. My question on, on, on what you were saying earlier about uh, models, um, Br Brett and Sata also and I talked about uh, at Amazon, and your guests talked about as well, it's not just the models that are important. It's the end to end, and you say last mile. So I'm assuming that there's the beginning, middle, and end of the of the story. So you can have a great model, but if you're too focused on one model, and Arun at Intel just said, why build a model that already exists? It's a means to an end. So, so my, 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 my guest, um, my, my guest, the panelists actually all talk about this one thing, right? One is technology. The other one is how you look at it, the technology, right? VJ actually mentioned to me. Um, you know, early today during my lunch, he said, hey, you know, everyone's talking about hallucination being a problem. Sure, it can be a problem sometimes, but look at a hallucination as a feature, right? You know, it's a kind of a creativity. So this is, at that point, it's like how you work with the generative AI. You need to rethink about, you know, that it takes a different culture, a different mindset, a different way of thinking. So I was asking the, my panelists early today about, hey, what is the, you know, it will take time. What sort of things will take time, right? One is the technology built out, but the other thing is actually the way we think about how we are working with this technology will take time. It's not like everyone still think the traditional way, right? <laughs> Enterprise software. The, so I think that would take some time. Yeah, and then you, you don't want to lose it, just keep it sober. Feed it data that, it, that you know is good and keep your model clean. Howie, um, final word. What's your takeaway from SuperCloud 4 this year? If you look back at the conversations you had, how as we're having here, what's your so big takeaway? this is the fourth episode of this, you know, SuperCloud. Remember a year ago, right? This is about cloud, yeah. not AI. And then in SuperCloud 2, you know, I was among one of the small number of people talk, talking about AI, generative AI, right? Last episode, uh, you know, I was more talking about security, but a lot more generative yeah. AI. I think at this time, right, you know, SuperCloud is about, you know, <laughs> the generative Can AI. Can we just call it Super AI Day? We yeah. just kind of get over with it. Move super power. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so Howie. my takeaway is, you know, this thing is, you know, it's, it's going to be real and it's going to take time. And unlike the previous uh, generation of the uh, technology wave, it will still take time, but at a compressed uh, time frame. You're a wonderful contributor. Thank you so much for all the prep work that you did, organizing yeah. the panel, it was fantastic. Yeah. And if you need an analyst job, we're, yeah. we got some openings for you. I know you got a gig, a nice gig over in Palo Alto. Uh, we have stock options too. Coins. <laughs> Cube coins. Cube coins. <laughs> Howie, knows. great panel you hosted. Again, again, this is what we're going to do more of. Thank you for your contribution, folks watching. We People bring their, their guests to the table, amazing guests, great content. All the super clouds have been about data and the, the data is changing now with generative AI. This is the next big thing. It's just early days. It's not even inning one, it's pre-gaming. There's a generational shift happening. It's all about data, it's all about scale and software. The superpowers will be there. We'll be back with a short break after the short break for closing segments. Stay with us. <laughs>